In this video, we're going to go through an example of calculating the half-life. So let's read through the example problem here. So it says a certain reaction has the following general form. It has some uh, reactant A that turns to a product B with stoichiometric coefficients little a and little b respectively. It says at a particular temperature and con initial concentration of 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molar, concentration versus time data were collected for this reaction and a plot of ln a versus time resulted in a straight line with a slope value of negative 2.97 times 10 to the negative two minutes per minute right um, and we got three things we need to do a says determine the rate law the integrated rate law and the value of the rate constant for this reaction uh, and then it says for part b calculate the half-life of this reaction so that's what we'll be calculating the half-life then in part C, it says how much time is required for the concentration of A to decrease to 2.5 times 10 to the 3 molar, right? So first part A is really just using a bunch of stuff that we learned in the previous unit, right? So if we start with part A, first they want us to determine the rate law, right? Now, the rate law in this case um, is going to be indicative of the rate order, right? So really it's asking us of, about the rate order. Right. Um, so we know that since an LN of a versus time plot resulted in a straight line, we know that that's going to give us a first order reaction. Right. So for first order reactions, this relationship between the natural log of a and time is linear. So if we were to write out the uh, the differential rate law, right, we would have negative. One over a. dA dt is going to be equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A, right? So this would be our differential rate law, right? We would have to include our stoichiometric coefficient here, but the decrease in the concentration of A would be equal to the concentration of A raised to the first power, since it's a first order reaction. And we know that the integrated rate law would look like the following, right? We have ln A is equal to negative KT plus the natural log of the initial concentration, right? This is where the straight line relationship between time and the natural log of A comes from. Keep in mind, this is really just Y equals MX plus B, right? Y equals MX plus B. So for a first order reaction, you're going to have a straight line relationship, a linear relationship between the natural log of your con of the concentration of your reactant and time, right? So that that knocks out two parts of this. We got the diff, uh, we got the rate law, we got the integrated rate law. Now we need to know what is the value of the rate constant for this reaction, and that's where we're going to have to return to our integrated rate law being a linear relationship here, right? They tell us that the slope of this line that it creates is this value here, right? So we know that if we just take the negative of that value, that is our reaction rate constant, right? So the, the reaction rate constant is just gonna be equal to negative of the slope of that relationship, right? So the slope here, right? So that means that for us, K is just gonna be equal to 2.97 times 10 to the negative two minutes per minute. Right. So that gives us the rate constant. So we got the rate constant. We got the integrated rate law. We got the differential rate law. Right. We got everything we need here. OK, so that's part A. We got the rate law, got the integrated rate law, got the rate constant. So we're good with that one. So now for part B, part B is asking us to calculate the half life. So this is where we're going to have to actually use that equation that we derived in the previous video. Right. So for part B, we're going to have to use the first order rate uh, half life equation in order to calculate this. So in the previous video, we got down to this expression where we knew that the half life for a first order reaction is going to be 0 0.693 divided by the respective rate constant. Right. So when you plug in your rate constant here. Right. So you're going to have 0 0.693. And, and remember that this value 0.693 came from the natural log of one half. So it's going to be a unitless quantity. So you don't want, have to worry about units for that value. But in your denominator, you've got 2.97 times 10 to the negative 2 
inverse minutes. So since the minutes is the inverse minutes is in the denominator, it can come up to the numerator once you uh, once you do the uh, the division here. So the number that you get here is twenty three point three three minutes. Right. So that would be how long it would take for this reaction. That's first order in its kinetics. So this is how long it would take for this reaction to reach half of its initial concentration. Right. So for that reactant to reach half of its initial concentration. OK, so now the last one is saying how much time is required for the concentration of A to decrease to 2.5 times 10 to the third molar. So in this question, we're going to have to use our integrated rate law here. So this equation should give us what we need here, right? We're trying to look for a time, right? So if we uh, write out this integrated rate law, equal negative KT plus LN initial concentration of A, right? So what I like to do is to just do the algebra up front and then plug everything in at the end once I've done all the algebra. So um, if we wanna, I, we wanna solve for the time, we wanna solve how much time is required here. So let's do the algebra, very similar to what we did in the previous video to get the, um, the half-life expression for the first order reaction, right? So we got LN A, Right. And here again, we can exploit a, a law of natural logarithms where if you have ln A minus ln B, then that's just going to be equal to ln A over B. Right. So we can exploit that same thing here. Right. So we can say ln initial concentration of A over the final concentration of A. And then basically from there, you just do the inverse of the rate constant here times LN initial concentration of A over the final concentration of A, right? So when you do that natural log, again, you get a unitless quantity because you're dividing molar by molar, right? So you end up with a unitless quantity there. And so the only thing that's left here is, is a uh, time in the denominator. So we're good. Uh, the final unit should give us time. So when you plug in uh, your numbers here, the final time that you get is 70.01 minutes. So this is the amount of time that it takes to reach the concentration given here. And it makes sense. It's a little bit uh, less here than half, or it's a little bit more um, that's, that's left here, uh, or a little bit more that has to be taken away than half. So it makes sense that it will take longer to get there than it, than it does to get to half concentration for our half-life, right? So the only thing I did here, um, I didn't show plugging in, but basically plug in your initial concentration of uh, two, times 10 to the negative two. Here you plug in your final concentration that you're looking for, 2.5 times 10 to the negative three. And then you just plug in your rate constant, you should get 70.01. Okay, so that's the half-life. That's how you calculate the half-life. So um, in the next video, we're gonna start talking about other uh, ordered reactions, right? So uh, higher order chemical kinetics, second order, um, and then we'll talk about zero order reactions as well. So getting off of just talking about first order reactions, we'll start to talk about uh, other orders uh, of reactions in chemical kinetics.